What's up with it? It's your boy Gemini from Two Hendrix. Shout out to my boy Street Credentials. I'm holding it down for Apollo Rari. He out there in Indiana right now. We just repping for the city, Dallas, Texas. Let's get it. Spinning it all with the racks in the book, but these niggas ain't talking about shit. I'm getting racks in the morning, my pocket so fat that I walk with a limp. Yeah. Two Hendrix. Yeah, what's up with it, bro? My boy, like, yes, sir. I really appreciate you. Yes, sir. Taking your time to come forward because, like, hey. you're you an out of town artist. Yes, sir. Shout yeah. out South Carolina. Yeah, like, out of town artists, when I be seeing them tap into my page and yeah. DM me and shit, even talking about working. Yeah. That yeah. shit be turning me up a little bit because, yeah. like, I started the platform just for Carolina artists in a way. Like, okay. I just wanted Carolina artists to get their stories out. Yeah. And more people could, like, we really on some black ball shit out here. Yeah. I've got that. hella artists, but yeah. never gonna see them. Yeah, I'm out here getting real big. Yeah, At least yeah. not yet. That's why I started the platform, but that shit really turned me over. Somebody yeah. from uh, uh, out of the state, like yeah. really hit me. Like, let's work. Bro. Yeah, and and see, that's that's what I noticed about the South Carolina market since I've been out here. And actually, you know, I actually kind of like that market a, a little bit more than Dallas because I feel like Dallas is kind of like a dog eat dog world type of environment when it comes to artistry. We have a lot of uh, like big talent out there. Uh, Travis Scott came from uh, came from Texas. Uh, Beyonce came from Houston. Um, Mexican OT, you know, um, fucking like plenty of people post malone came out of texas so texas just has like such a huge market full of artists and everybody wants to be rappers so it's kind of hard to break out and get your shine but ever since i've been out here in south carolina like south carolina just been rocking with me you feel me and that's how i found you that's how i met you you know what i'm saying yeah. like they sent me a page and i was like damn bruh bruh shit Bruh's content is fire. I need to hop on this immediately. You feel me? You, and get some fucking, uh, just have connections, link up, bro. Because at the end of the day, you know, being an artist is one thing, but being a value to somebody's life is more important than just artistry. And I feel like that's where artists, uh, you know, I feel like that's where they lose their self a little bit because it's it's a little bit about the music, you know what I'm saying? But the music industry is only 10% music and 90% business. So, you know, anybody can sound like Lil Wayne, anybody can sound like any other rapper, but what else can you bring to the table besides rapping? And I feel like that's what I help establish uh, myself as an artist and I feel like that's why a lot of people fuck with me and a lot of people continue to help support me and push me into the direction of where I'm supposed to be at because I can bring more to the table than just my music you know what I'm saying yeah, it's like sure. one thing rocking out with me for my music but business wise I stand on my business you feel yeah, me yeah that's a whole different thing yeah and that's I could not listen to your music at all but I know you got potential. We can do some business to like yeah. make some money off your shit. And I yeah. still never listen. Yeah, facts. And and that's how it is. And that's just how it is, bro. Like, it's not always. That like, be the case with a lot of people. Yeah. Like, when these promoters that book you, they don't yeah. listen to your music. Yeah. They just know you got fans and they're going to come. So they're going to book you. Yeah. And that's and, and, and really, that's how it is in the music industry. As you can tell with a lot of this music, bro, like all this music really sound watered down. Because it's not, it's not so much about the song anymore it's about you know it is it's about so how much, much money he gonna put yeah, up to the club and throw while yeah, he rapping that song yeah and and you know you do gotta make a good song with it but the good song alone is isn't what's gonna make you uh you know yeah, it's uh, not gonna a make big you rapper yeah you <laughs> gotta know how to get into the right doors and speak to the right people and the right people is what move you to the right direction for example um out in dallas i got uh one of my partners his name is digi norm and uh he rocks the club scene out there um like he has a connection full of djs and fucking like he's working with this one artist uh his name is johnny d and uh he kind of got like you know dallas we got like a kind of like a south uh uh like a boogie type of dance like yeah, who's like some to, like who's some like dallas artists like uh um, like this out now i'm trying to think like uh well we have yellow like, beezy yeah we got yellow beezy we yeah, had beezy. we had mo three yeah I we had mo3. uh that that uh girl more in, like in underground Chance. though give me give me some more like underground uh we got enchanted where, where go yayo from uh go yayo he's, he's from, from arlington all right yeah. he's from arlington um I know a lot of tits right yeah yeah, yeah. I think my favorite one is Sauce Walker. Yeah, Sauce Walker. Sauce Walker, he's probably one of the uh, the bigger ones that's putting on for the city yeah, right sure. now. Definitely. Uh, and he's an entrepreneur, too. Like, he's about yeah, his sure. music, uh, but he also about his money. Industry, you yeah. feel me? And that's the type of person I am, too. Like, I like to be about both. You feel me? Like, I like to be about my music, but your music 
You got you got to be about both. The man exactly. that only makes music just gonna be making it for his homeboys here. Exactly. You know what I mean? You don't got your business in order. Facts. Making music just a hobby. <laughs> yeah. Facts. Facts. Because see, yeah, go ahead. My bad. Like you were saying, like you were saying, you think it's a little harder in Texas to pop because there's a lot of big artists out there. Yeah. But like here, no big artists, so it's like you're yeah. not looking. Yeah. What I really feel like it is is like like I be telling people, South Carolina got a lot of these little clubs, these little dirty hood street yeah, clubs out yeah. here. But these the clubs that's paying these big artists twenty, thirty thousand to come yeah. out there and perform, you know? Yeah. The day they let a South Carolina artist like start rocking those clubs out, he's over with for these out of state people. Yeah. I think that's why it's like that. Like, I, I heard we uh, don't got no big artists. We got one, two. I, I heard uh, <laughs> I, I think I was I was hearing about Rennie Rucci. Rennie Rucci yeah, Rennie from Rucci. South Carolina. Yeah, Rennie Rucci. Yeah. She she got she got a little buzz going gonna on. Tell you, you know something what I'm a little bigger than yeah. I know it down for Yeah, it, yeah, we uh we we rock with Rennie Rucci out there and she uh, on a whole other tip other than just music though. Yeah, that's one. One she a female, two she rap, then she do TV. Yeah, then she was doing yeah. other things and she like you just don't hit the same. Really. You know what I'm saying? And and an artist kind of like that that relates uh to that kind of like wave uh but you know she's I would say she's bigger than Rennie Rucci. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to Rennie. Uh, we got Erica Banks um out in dallas and she's also right now she made that song uh bust that's finesse two times uh, it's girlfriend yeah right? finesse Damn, two times. Rucci threw, threw a drink in her face on tv oh, oh for real oh, I, I ain't like Rucci threw it through through like champagne in her face on, on tv <laughs> it was arguing for people oh that's crazy that look, shit in her face on tv look i ain't even know that shit maybe we might gotta cut that out no, i ain't even know that look get that, that going look Erica Banks, she's from Dallas, um, you know, and she she used to go out with Finesse two times, but she actually had a hit record as well. Uh, she would she had that song Bust It uh, yeah. with that Nelly sample, yeah. and um, now like shit, she on she on Love and Hip Hop and shit. I guess Rene Rucci on Love and Hip Hop too, so I yeah. guess they kind of yeah, got that's where it kind of got like a little storyline going yeah, that's on where between that them. Then, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Got got a little Dallas South Carolina thing going <laughs> versus South Carolina thing going on, but uh, yeah, bro, like I, I get what you're saying though, but. I see, I see what you're saying, and you know, but it might just be like a city thing. Like it, it might just be from like if you're from that city, it's harder to pop off from the city that well, you're from. Like, I just feel like it's this state, bro. We got yeah. big artists in here that yeah. that popped outside of this city, though. Like we yeah. got a good bit of artists here yeah. that pop way outside this yeah. city. Like yeah. it's, it, I can name three artists right now. Yeah. That the whole state listen to. Okay, it's not getting outside the state though. Yeah, I I, I thought I heard of, uh, one dude. Uh, I think his name is Zach. Hey, something yeah, Zach. Black Zach. Black Zach. That's the one he I heard. Of. Yeah, he's yeah. a big artist out here too. Yeah, but it's like everybody don't listen to him. Yeah, I got you. I I've never heard one of his songs, but people nah, have been hard. putting me on like who, yeah. For so sure, he out of here too. But it's like. We need something bigger. Yeah, I feel it. We that. need something bigger, that. bro. I feel like he big, he made it out of here, but yeah. we need something bigger to make yeah. it like yeah. like how the baby yeah. did his shit. And they like, oh, bro from North Carolina? We need somebody to come from South Carolina where they like, oh, yeah. South Carolina got something out there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sure. I think I think it's cause y'all a, a small market. Like a small market as far as like y'all, you know what I'm saying? Like even with other things outside of rap, like uh one one football team and that's really like the Carolina Panthers. Yeah. And that that kinda engulfs both and, they, and that's not yeah, that's not even in yeah, South Carolina. Yeah. They yeah. North Carolina. That engulfs like both states, kinda, yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying? And like really the only the only team that y'all really got out here is like the college team. We don't even claim the Panthers. Yeah. South see. Carolina don't claim the Panthers, see. we don't got no team. Yeah. People from South Carolina like any team. Yeah. Most so. of South Carolina got Dallas. Cowboys, yeah, yeah. North Carolina, they the Cowboys. They the Cowboys. Yeah, they the Cowboys. Hey, they, I mean, they the old Panthers for sure. Yeah, they the Panthers for sure. But shit, bro. Where you got your rap name from? Uh, so actually, I got my rap name. Uh, so I used to go by this. Uh, I used to go by Bob's One Hundred. That used to be my rap name. Bob's One Hundred. Yeah, I used to tell people my rap names was Bob's, and like I used to keep telling. Um, I used to keep telling everybody like, hey, you know, uh, like my name is Bob's, my name is Bob's, my name is Bob's, like, you know, your nickname, like, hey, what, what you want people to call you, whoop de whoop de whoop whatever. Nobody was calling me that shit. Like every time, like my, my, my older brother, he looked more like a rapper than I do. That, that nigga literally looked like fucking Future and shit. Like he looked like he a fucking star right now. Probably just shit. off his way he dressed and shit. Yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. He looked like a fucking star right now type shit. And like. 
every time I'm with my older brother, or whatever, they like, hey, uh, they would they would say that nigga name, but they wouldn't say my name type shit. They'd be like, oh, where your little brother at? Where your little brother at? Yeah. Woo that vibe shit wasn't sticking. You, you know ain't what I'm saying? That, so you nah, like, I got to change this shit. Nah, nah, facts, facts. And the shoddy, shoddy that I be fucking with, she fucking, um. She fucking like she came up with Gemini and like ever since she came up with that shit, I used to I just tell everybody, hey, my name Gemini, my name Gemini, and that shit just stuck. You feel me? They was like, oh yeah, that that fits you type shit. So it's a lot better, a lot better of experience. People really be fucking with that with that Boz one hundred. I miss that name type shit. You know what I'm saying? Cause that was like a different part of my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But Gemini. Yeah, that Yeah, Boz gone. gone. It's yeah, gone. Gemini. Nah, you know what I'm saying? So. So what about two hundred? Oh, two Hendrix. Okay, so how we came up with two Hendrix? It was me and my brother. Um, so basically, that goes hand in hand with that name uh, Vibe. So we used to be called VHS, basically, and VHS used to stand for Vibes Hill Souls, and I was Vibes of VHS type shit. And okay. I and I was in a group before my brother. It was uh me and three other artists in there. We had uh one singer and uh two other rappers outside of me type shit, and like. My brother was like, hey, you know, he wanted to rap with me, whatever. We wanted to rap, whatever. So I left that group and I just stuck with my brother type shit. And fucking like, we were like, hey, we were like, you know, VHS is a cool name. Bob's Hill Souls is a cool name. But we got to think about like when we up there rapping and shit, like, and we're on cards and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you yeah. see Money Bag Yo, you see fucking like, you know, you see all these fucking names. <laughs> Finesse Two Times. Yeah, what? Bro, that's the name I was just thinking of in my yeah. name. Like, other than probably that, Finesse Two Times got one of the hardest rap names. Yeah, <laughs> he do, he do. Finesse Two Times and shit. And like, you see all that, them hard ass rap names type shit. And then you see BHS and it's like, that shit really don't like fit in like that market space of like what we're trying to accomplish. So we were like, fuck it. Like my brother came up with two Hendrix and we just kind of started rocking with it from there. So, yeah. So just kept on going with two hinges and shit yeah. the whole time. That's what you labeled on your music. Yeah, yeah. So where you from? I'm from Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. Uh, rocking out, out there. Like, it's it's really like, Dallas is really like the the major city, uh, but it's like a smaller city in Dallas called Louisville. Uh, that's where I'm from. That's where I currently reside. So it's called Louisville, not Louisville. Louisville? Yeah, Louisville, Texas. Louisville, Texas, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's where I'm really, uh, that's where I reside right now. I'm just really out here rocking out in South Carolina uh, for work and shit. But right now, ever since I've been out here, y'all really been, you know, I've really been fucking with y'all. Y'all really been helping put me on and shit. So I rock out with y'all for sure. Like, I, honestly, when I first heard that I was coming to South Carolina, I was kind of like nervous. Like, I like, but like, I don't know if I really want to be out here. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't really hear much about South Carolina. Yeah, for sure. She kind of, yeah, shit seemed kind of lame. Yeah, she yeah. She lame as hell. Yeah, but when, but when I got out here, though, I was like, oh, okay, this shit is actually pretty cool out here. You ain't that bad, bro, especially when you find you a couple little things yeah. to do. Like out here in the city of Columbia, it's a couple yeah. of things to do with people yeah. entertain. Yeah. It's straight. I ain't from here, but I, I've been living for a while, so I Yeah, what uh what city you from? So I'm from a city in South Carolina called Lamar. Lamar. I'm okay. really from North Carolina though. I just been living in South Carolina my whole life. Okay, okay. That's about Okay. So what was it like for you growing up? Where you from? Man, I I'm from uh so I right now I say I, I currently live in Louisville, Texas, but I'm from uh like a more like the more country area of Texas. It's like south, so you got Dallas and then you got the southern part of Dallas, and like around South Dallas areas like that Oak Cliff and stuff like that. Um so there's this little like uh kind of like, busy for Oak Cliff. Yeah, Oak Cliff. There's kinda like this like little uh tri group. Uh it's like Louis uh it's called it's Lancaster. Uh, DeSoto, Duncanville, well, it's like four places. It's Louisville, Duncanville, DeSoto, and Lancaster. And I'm from Lancaster, Texas. Um, it's like more smaller and more country. And shit, bro, honestly, dog, like I know a lot of folks had like a rough upbringing and shit, but my <laughs> my upbringing was like, I ain't even gonna front on the camera, bro. Like I really had like a, like this preppy ass, uh, preppy ass life growing up, bro. And, uh, my mom, like my grandma, she was like, she like one of them uh, Black Panther type of ladies. She like a Black Panther, but she don't really like being around black folk like that. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. So she like, like doing the good for them. Yeah. Yeah. And so she had me going to like this private school. She had me going to like this all white. It wasn't like all white private school, but she had me going to this fucking like white private school. And like, I would tell her. 
I would tell her like, hey, I don't want to be around this folks. Like I want to be around my, my black folks. Like, I want to be around my people, whatever type shit. And she fucking like, I, I got transferred my first year that I transferred to a black school, bro. I, I actually got bullied, bro. They, them niggas was like bullying me bad, bro. Cause I taught, yeah, I that taught, shit was different. Yeah, it's real different, bro. And it's, mm-hmm. I taught real proper, you know what I'm saying? Like I pronounce, pronounce all my words and shit. So like, you know what I'm saying? Never being around black people really before. And then fuck coming from all white people and skateboarding and then all different type of shit like and then going to black people like you know being around black people i was like fucking i was lame and shit, shit you know what i'm saying the shit, the shit black people do is different i was yeah. about to say niggas but yeah. i don't want to say that no nah, i got the you shit, the shit black people yeah. do no nah, it, it's yeah. completely it's completely different that, that's facts bro. that's how it was for me when i was in north carolina though okay you got, i moved from north carolina you on here okay north carolina it's like nothing but white people okay so i go from like the hood to like yeah. white people you feel me yeah. yeah and they looking at me like yeah so I had to like figure out my way, like yeah. how I can navigate around these white people and shit. But they they start fucking with me overall. Yeah. Like, I got a lot of white like, friends and shit in North Carolina that still fuck with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got nah. a lot of mix with both. both yeah, and all that, ethnicities though, because it's, shit, it's yeah. a lot of races out here, man. Yeah, and that's kind of and that's kind of basically, hey, just basically like my story type shit, like fucking just just flipped around. You know what I'm saying? You you came from the hood, whatever, and then you went around a lot of white people, and I was around a lot of white people. And went to the hood, and that experience, bro, is just different, bro. Cause like, the thing is, I came back to the hood. So yeah. when I came back to the hood, I was like, damn, I should have stayed where I was at. Yeah, bro. Where? That's yeah. how I was feeling. Like, damn, I done fucked up and came back. Yeah, but hey, <laughs> hey, you just gotta do what you gotta do, though. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. There, there ain't nothing wrong with our people. They just act a little ignorant sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. That's that's it. It. Yeah. So, when did you start making music officially? Hey, I started making music about like four years ago. Um, really, I really ain't been making music too long type shit. Like I know some people been talking about they be making music since they was eight and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to I used to be like the certified lover boy type nigga, bro. Like I used to fucking like write poetry. Like I write a lot of uh, like love poetry type shit. And like um, when I did used to write raps, like uh, that's when like Lil Wayne was like at his peak. Uh, like when he was making fucking like uh, um, nightmares on the bottom, fucking. Like, like um um pick the world up drop yeah. it on your fucking head like shit like that like all yeah, this six right foot seven like foot that. eight foot bunch yeah. like all that shit and like when I did was making music like everybody used to tell me like I tried to sound too much like Lil Wayne like I wanted to be like a metaphor uh style rapper like you know just because Lil Wayne got fucking crazy ass bars like that man will say some shit that fucking I feel like like how the fuck did you even think about you know shit like that type shit so that's how I wanted to rap like um and you know and like you know I just didn't have a voice for it dog to be honest with you like my shit my first couple my first like songs and I feel like maybe all artists had go through this shit but my first couple songs was ass as fuck bro like my shit was so trash and like now now compared and but you know it just take time like I've been rapping for four years and like I'm signed to an independent label that's with Sony so like I'm always making music 24 7 like I'm always recording I got my own like home studio so I'm recording myself so like when people hear my old music to when they hear me now and they be like damn bro you done came a long way but that's because like you know some people some folks are like naturally talented at rapping you feel me yeah. some folks are naturally talented and i wasn't like naturally talented yeah, at rapping yeah, it worked i had to work for it you feel me like and sometimes it just take it just take that hard work to get there yeah, you bro. gotta like, keep practicing on doing stuff exactly. and shit get better yeah, yeah, every bro. time you do it you're gonna get a little better you're gonna get a little bit better like my main problem like with my main problem when I be rapping, my my fucking main problem be like uh, timing. Like sometimes like I'm on time all the way, and then sometimes like I'll get off beat type shit. Yeah. And like just having to punch in, punch out, punch in, punch out, punch in, punch out to get right back on beat type shit. So that that really be what it is, dog. That's that's really about it. Where you where you feel like the energy come from your music, bro? I, I feel like I change into a whole different person when 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 I do music, bro. Like. I'm already like a like a real upbeat type person type shit, bro. But like when I'm behind the studio, like I don't even feel like myself for real. It really feel like I be channeling some. It really be felt like I be channeling something else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. I know the rappers always be saying they be channeling something, but really it really do be feeling like you know a whole different energy come out of you when uh when 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 I uh when I perform when I rap like 
when I'm not behind the mic, like I'm really like just like kind of like a low key person, like just try to like stay to myself, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just chill or whatever. But when it when that when it's showtime, bro, like I get, you know, just I just turn up, bro. You just really turn so, up. So when you start rapping, you go up and you sign your deal. Like how it sit, how it feel when a lot of people start knowing you that you don't really know and from your DM start going crazy. Bruh. You start going certain places and they know you. Bruh, like I'm kind of I ain't where I ain't where I want to be at yet, but I'm kind of like starting to get up there to the point like where like I'm getting more a lot more interaction, a lot more people been fucking with me lately, bruh. And it's honestly that shit feel weird, dog. Like I'm talking about girls who I used to try to fuck with years ago type shit like back like try to slide back in my dms and like just it's just it's crazy bro it's crazy and then every time i'm logging on instagram my fucking dms like are just fucking blowing up bro and like i told you i'm i'm the boss bro like i'm not the fucking i used to own a trucking company i used to own three semi trucks uh in my name type shit and fucking um even on Instagram, like, uh, I run fucking, like, engagement groups, like, uh, it, what's it called? It's called a fucking engagement group. So, basically, like, you drop your picture or you drop your photo or your video in there, and then people will, like, go and comment on your shit. Like, they'll, they'll fucking, and I mean, like, I run about, like, five, ten of them bitches, like, full of hundreds of people in there. Yeah. You feel me? So, my shit, my, my DMs is going crazy 24-7. Bro, I got so much, like, I got so much pull, like, when it comes to, like, social media, bro, like, I can literally, like, I, I got connections to where, like, I can make somebody, if they got the budget, you know what I'm saying, it's gonna be expensive, but I can make somebody, like, a Mr. Beast, like, you know, like, a fucking, like, you know how Mr. Beast got real, like, high cloud and shit, or, like, a fucking Kai, like, even, like, a Duke Dennis or a Kai Sinai, like, I can make, I can literally make somebody like that. But it just take the right it just take the right budget for it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? For sure. Because I use the like I got systems, I got plugins with people, I got fucking some of my friends, uh one of my one of my partners, he's a celebrity trainer. He he be with like Mike Tyson and shit and fucking like I got uh niggas like who be in my DMs, got four hundred thousand followers, million million followers, shit like that. Like I really got connections to like get people to where they wanna go to and that's and that's where that's when I when I was talking in the beginning, fucking talking about like how can you you know what I'm saying, cause the music industry is all about connections. And how can you separate yourself from being a regular artist to being the person that you want to become? You feel me? And that's what I worked on to try to separate myself. Like, I run the, the Instagram groups. I run the fucking, like, I, I work with the management company that, that's with Jacquees, like, helping get slots, helping get shows, fucking, like, just plugged in with all these different type of people, got networks full of DJs, got networks full of verified people, any verified per person a person want want to know type shit, you know what I'm saying, uh, up to a limit type shit, you know, I got international artists, I got fucking people in Africa, Nigeria, fucking verified niggas in Nigeria that fuck with my shit, fuck with me, like, ready to do anything for me type shit, you know what I'm saying, yeah, and sure. that's what, that's, that's, that's the connections that I fucking built to, like, separate myself from every other artist, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have the most music out right now. I don't make the most videos out right now. Like, some niggas is out there really hungry, and I salute them. They really hungry. They making videos every other week, every two weeks, every day, you know what I'm saying? And fucking, you know what I'm saying? And, like, that's that's the step. That's what you're supposed to do as an artist, but you, you also need to try to figure out what you can do to separate yourself from the music as well to put yourself in a position because if you don't make yourself if you don't make yourself the boss motherfuckers gonna screw you over you feel me like they gonna they gonna it's, it, it don't take nothing to take get an artist who ain't really got shit and fucking give them a, a, a mean ass 360 deal and now they ain't fucking getting money right. you know what I'm saying and they yeah, making all this great. music making all this music and they ain't touching none of their money compared to compared to if you made yourself the boss at the very beginning you won't let nobody you wouldn't let nobody take shit from you. You feel me? Like you, you raise your value. That's and that's the most important part. Raising your value. Raise your value as an artist. Um, like make yourself, you know, make yourself wanted and needed outside of just your music. And and that those little steps right there, and combined with just making your music videos, making your songs, 
that shit right there, that's what take you to the next limit. You feel me? That's what take you to the next level. There could be um, a manager, there could be a manager who, you know what I'm saying? Like he don't really like your music, but he's looking for other artists to sign. And a nigga like me, for example, I got five Nigerian folks. I got Nigerian people right now who sound fucking like Burna Boy who's ready and hungry to be signed. Or I got artists from Dallas who's ready to be signed. I got people on a Jacquiso who's ready to be signed. Shit, them, them nigga might not fuck with my music, but I'd be like, hey, bro, I'll bring you all these folks right now. You know what I'm saying? If you give me a chance type shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's the that's what separates you. That's what separates you from the next level. You feel me? Like, can you plug people in? Because the fucking music industry is a dog eat dog world. It's a dirty ass game. All everybody just want money. You feel me? You got genuine connections out there, but if you ain't coming with that bread, you ain't coming with that budget, or you ain't coming with some value, niggas ain't gonna fuck with you. You feel me? Yeah. So sure. you need to. You need if you ain't got the budget. Okay, if you ain't got the budget, what else can you bring to the table? That's not just budget. You feel me? Like you need to, you do need to have the bread. Music industry take a lot of money before you even start making any money. You feel me? You got to make a lot of investments. Uh, you know, but build your, build your, build your brand too, because the music industry is about business. You know what I'm saying? And if you're not, if you're not bringing that business, like you're really just wasting your time, because or you going or you might be hot enough to get where you want to go. Uh, but then you on on camera like Su Sukiana crying like you know what I'm saying she is where she is now but she was on camera crying talking about she felt like she sold her soul to the devil you feel me she was on on camera crying saying that shit you know what I'm saying and it probably was metaphorically you know what I'm saying whatever it might have been metaphorically just saying like she felt like she signed all her rights away to be who she is now type shit and if you don't build your brand before you come in. You you set yourself up to to be fucked like that. You feel me? And that's and that's what separates the artists that turn into millionaires and billionaires like Jay Z, like fucking um, uh, Birdman, like uh, just a uh, fucking Master P. That's what separates uh people from becoming billionaires and and you know having longevity compared to the artists who have one hit and then you don't never even hear them about them anymore because it's, it's not all about the music like yes the song can get you hot but what are you gonna do after that song you know starts to fade away because you don't stay famous yeah, forever yeah. that song ain't gonna keep getting played exactly bro exactly so you do a lot of stuff bro where you feel like you get that work ethic from Bro, so I I just wanted to like shout out my pops, my uh my dad. He passed away two years ago. Um, but he was the one. He's he's actually from South Carolina. He's actually from South Carolina, and he was the one who uh who taught me hard work and dedication. Like me and him, like I said, we used to own a trucking company. I used to own three semi trucks. I'm only I'm only 28. I'm 28. I, at 26, I was owning three semi trucks, paying a grown ass man fifteen hundred dollars a week. Uh, paying grown ass men fifteen hundred dollars a week to uh to drive for me type shit, and you know what I'm saying that right there teaches you you know turns a boy into a man you feel me and like fucking ever since he passed I just try to keep that same I try to keep that same energy that he showed me throughout my life to show me you know what it takes to be next level you feel me you gotta. It, you got to just separate yourself. You feel me? Everybody is doing, you know, everybody does a YouTube channel. Everybody does music. Everybody does plays football. But what makes you, what turns you from fucking, you know, just a no name person to Deion Sanders? What turns you into, you know, whoever, even if you want to say just a player who turns you into Dez Bryant, who turns you into Patrick Mahomes, like what turns you into that person? You feel me? And it's that dedication and putting in that hard work every single day to try to get to where you, you want to go. Um, like me currently, like I do my music shit. I got a show with Jacquees all like that. I'm about to perform out in Dallas. And then I still work a full time job. Seven. Uh, I work uh, six days a week, 12 hour shifts. A, a whole full time job um, that had me travel across around the world, you know what I'm saying? And they they relocated me to South Carolina, and you see, I I hooked up with Brunham, uh Street Credentials, and we we still out here rocking, 
But that shows if you really have the love and you really have the passion for this shit or not, because there's no excuses. The only person that's stopping you from getting to where you want to be is yourself. You feel me? And not standing out from the crowd. You feel me? Like you got it. You got it. You got to separate yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I was rocking with street credentials and we, me, me and Brendan was talking earlier and you know what I'm saying? And I was asking him about live music reviews and shit. And Brendan was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at that to my portfolio. And I want to, I want to do that. But he was like, bro, I, I feel like everybody's doing that type shit. So he was like, bro, I, I want to find a lane for myself that, that I feel like I can stand out in. I just started this shit. I still just started doing these and everybody's already fucking with me. But that's because he saw a market in South Carolina that wasn't really popping like that. He saw his own lane. He started his own section in South Carolina. And, and since he's the only one of the only few people providing this service, he's already getting folks from out of town. He's already getting people from Dallas, Texas. Fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's about standing out and separating yourself. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's and that's how you succeed. That's how you succeed. For sure. What's the last thing you saw that like influenced you in some type of way? Man, the last thing that I saw that influenced me some type of way. Oh, that's a good question. What what influenced me in a, a, some type of way? Good influence just make you want to do something like go yeah. harder than you already been going. And man, hey, really. Really, what be like influencing me is being like seeing seeing artists come out of Dallas, Texas that I don't think make better music than me. You feel me? And like, I'm like, you know, y'all y'all had a hot song type shit, but I really like already been. I really I've been doing this for like I know four years really ain't that long, but like I got like plenty of pictures. I just don't really have posted on my Instagram, but I got pictures with like Waka Waka Flocka, uh, Trap Boy Freddie. Um, Lil Ronnie uh, out of Dallas, he's one of our, our, he makes a lot of hot twerk songs, like um, DJ Papa Ron, shout out P-Skills, like shout out, shout out K104, 97.9, like I, I know all of them, I've been around them, I stay around them, them folks, you know what I'm saying, and when I see another artist where I feel like, damn, I feel like they ain't really been working harder as me type shit, I'm like, okay, that motivates me to just go harder, you feel me, yeah, and... Sure. Because, you know, I know I got the talent to make it. It's just about what I need to do to get there. You feel me? So. What's some big features you want to do with rappers that's out here? Like man. Doing it right now? Man. Hey, I'm in, I'm in South Carolina. I really want to fuck with that Zach nigga real shit. Like, I want to fuck with Zach. Like, I want to get some, I want to get some features with some hot South Carolina artists. I want to try to, uh, I'm going to try to say, well, I'm trying to get like some bigger features though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really want like a money bag, yo feature, <laughs> some yeah. shit. Cause that, that feature like that really will set you off. You feel me? Like, especially if you make good music, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, Boosie, Boosie been doing some music. Like he really start trying to pop back off in like the whole scene. Or whatever so and uh my, my my bodyguard he fuck with boosie them heavy you know what i'm saying i wouldn't mind getting a boosie feature either you know what i'm saying like just boosie be fucking with niggas out here too yeah one of my partners be fucking with boosie selling them dollars and shit okay okay yeah yeah boosie boosie really be boosie really be out in the streets like boosie is like a, a field runner for sure for sure like boosie be everywhere like that's why i, I fuck with boosie's hustle because you know he still he be making like independent movies and shit too with yeah, his yeah. uh with his brand that, that man lose his fucking instagram every other uh, every other week and you see he every time he come back he back with 300 500 thousand followers yeah, so yeah, he's boosie yeah so like and that's 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 what i'm trying to that's like the the brand that i'm trying to establish like i want wherever the fuck i go like niggas know who i am yeah. type shit you feel me so and even if you're not there they're looking for you yeah even if i'm not there they're looking for me you feel me so so what's some of your pet peeves like being an artist? Man, hey, some some of my pet peeves being an artist is just that when you when you tell folks that you do music and that you rap, like for one, girls think that shit is a red flag. Two, niggas, when you tell a nigga that you rap, one, he don't even halfway want to support your music because he think you trash. You feel me? And like you can send him over and over the same link to your song and he don't listen, he don't listen to it. You feel me? And that's the number one thing. That's my number one pet peeve about being an artist is just that folks really like since the market is so oversaturated, like you really have to like work to stand out to like make yourself different. 
and I, I don't know like <laughs> and then uh, my second pet peeve I just don't like how grimy the industry is like if you ain't got your back paperwork right you you low-key could get all your shit stole yeah, yeah. you feel me like you sign one bad contract all your money gone you fucking um you you think a nigga like about to do a service for you but that nigga really a scam page and he just take your deposit type shit you know what I'm saying like fucking and uh fucking clout chasers and and fucking demons bro like these motherfuckers are in in the music industry really be some fucking demons bro they really blood suckers. they they blood suckers bro real life vampires leeches bro mm -hmm. they always want you for some you know what i'm saying and they only fuck with you when they see you got some but when you at the bottom nigga nobody want to fuck with your ass then you get big now everybody and their mama swinging a block now you gotta you. start telling people no now you gotta start telling people no and now they think you're an asshole they think you changed up but it's like bitch you wasn't in the gym shooting sure, with me, you, know. feel me? you wasn't in the gym shooting with me you feel me so like you need like like that's why like you you really got to stay humble in this shit and no matter how big that you get just never forget where you came from because those new friends that are rocking with you them niggas is only rocking with you because you you they feel like you got some you feel me um they feel like they can find a way to 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 leech off of you and take what you got you feel me so you just gotta remember that you're a king you know what i'm saying hold your crown up uh that's my main advice don't let these girls take all your money either, man. All these rappers be having all these fucking kids and all their money gone type shit. And you know what I'm saying? Like, girls come a dime a dozen. You feel me? And a lot of these girls ain't got good morals. I ain't trying to go all Kevin Samuels in this bitch, but a lot of girls ain't got no good morals or got no good intentions. Long live Kevin Samuels. Yeah, long live Kevin Samuels. I was fucking with Kevin for real. Man, Kevin Kevin really spit some truth and you know what I'm saying? And people didn't like him and people don't like you when you speak the truth. You feel for me? Sure. And people don't that's like you speak the truth. That and that that's just for more than Kevin Samuels. Feel me? Like that's for fucking Martin Luther King. Yeah, that's yeah. for fucking Malcolm X. Like fucking when you speak the truth, like folks start hating you. You feel me? So that people wanna see you make it. Then when you make it, they start hating you. You feel me? They start they start envying you. They start they they start wanting to be you, and they want to try to take your spot. That's why all these rappers keep getting killed, cause niggas want to take their spot. They they hate that they can't have what this nigga have, bro. And like they don't respect the hard work and the hustle that this nigga had to put in to get the. They just want to take what he got now, nah, type shit. Like like fucking like pop smoke. Like rest in peace, rest in peace, pop smoke. Then he was on top of his world. He was a young nigga making money, like trying to get to where he wanted to be. And fucking some young niggas just came and robbed his ass. And, 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 and you know, he ended up dead. And all that shit was for nothing type shit. Like just, just for some little jewelry and shit that them niggas probably could have worked for to get up to. You feel me? So it's sure. just when you get to the top, niggas just really hate. They hate you. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's one of my biggest pet peeves it's just like bro there ain't there ain't no need to hate a nigga you know what i'm saying like bro there's enough money in this world for all of us to eat you feel me like no no need to be hating somebody over where they at you feel me like you know little baby got fans and nba young boy got fans they both rappers and some niggas don't fuck with little baby some niggas don't fuck with nba young boy so it don't matter like if your partner or one of the niggas that you used to kick it with and rap with you and now he's big and you're not big it don't matter bro make a lane for yourself what's the most important feature you think there is on a female bro i i really like females that they got locks bro like the shawty's that fucking got like uh like their hair locked up dog that means they like really been putting that that time in and that dedication for that shit but you know what i'm saying you know what they say about them locked up girls though you know they a little toxic so that's what you gotta watch out for when uh when, when you dealing with them you know what i'm saying so Fucking bro, and then my next thing, I, I mean, I guess I would have to say like, like, like a, a shawty with a nice smile, bro. Like that, that smile really like, really like set it off. When, when she got a pretty ass smile and she got them white nails with them fucking white toes, bro. That shit, that combo right there, bro. You really already know she on some, she on a different time, and you feel me? And that's true. That really get a nigga heart going type shit. So, you feel me? What's the weirdest DM you think you ever received? Ooh, the weirdest DM I, I ever received 
bruh, this motherfucking, this, this bitch, she DM'd me, bruh, and she was talking about, like, she was ready to, like, have a nigga kids, talking about, like, she, she washed dishes, she cooked clean, like, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't what, it wasn't what she said per se. It's just how she said, like, bitch, I ain't even never really, really met you before. And you, yeah. you really, like, fanned out type shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, she don't even know you at all. You bruh, don't know her at all, really. Bro, and fucking, you know what I'm saying? Nothing nothing against the LGBTQ community or whatever. But, like, sometimes them dudes just be in my DM. Just a little wild. Just, just a little reckless. You feel me? And just, like... You know what I'm saying? Like it just it just be wild what they say be saying like they be like, Hey bro, I'm I'm your biggest fan, blah 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 and then they go calling me their boyfriend in Bay and shit like nah bro, I ain't, ain't with all that shit like that's what I'm saying. So like that shit really be outlandish and shit, so you know what I'm saying. Free. What's your most expensive habit? Shit bro, I my most expensive habit, dog, really <clears throat> like fucking Shit, bro. I really like go to the casino, bro. I really like to go to the casino, fucking uh, pl play craps and shit, play with the dice, fucking and uh, play blackjack. I be uh playing poker too, shit. I really be like really out there gambling, feeling like I'm really about to win some money. De never be winning no money, really <laughs> be going home broke, bro. But shit, bro, that shit fun, dog. You just do some shit to me. What's something you do that people would consider like a weird flex, but you do it anyway? People consider a weird flex. Like what you what you like mean? Like I like mine is like I like to buy expensive dogs. You like to buy expensive some people dogs. just feel like like why you buy the dogs? You like you buy these expensive dogs as a flex. That's kind of weird, <laughs> bro. My my weirdest like flex, bro, and, and cause like folks folks really wouldn't even think like I do all this shit, bro. Like. Fucking like my weirdest flex, bro. It's like I be playing like uh, cause I travel a lot, right? So I, I got a five, but like I don't always be having time to like play my five or whatever. So like I play like a lot of mobile games type shit, like I like I iPhone games type shit, bro. And like fucking like there's a game called uh Call of Duty, Call of Duty on on mobile and fucking like um just like a couple games I be playing on mobile. I act, I'm actually like uh I'm actually like a legend on there. Like I'm like the highest. Like I'm like ranked on the leaderboards and shit on there. And folks folks wouldn't even know that shit just by looking at me. And that's like my weird display type shit. Motherfuckers think that shit weird. You know what I'm saying? I play video games like and fucking be like the best at it type shit. But like you know what I'm saying? So how you feel about like the Remy Ma and Papoose situation? Ooh, I feel like that shit crazy. I feel like that's crazy because wasn't it like Remy Ma was the one in jail and like fucking Papoose held her down, bro. She held her down. That man was staying strong. That man was a king while his shawty was in jail for sure. And now she out cheating. Uh, now she out fucking with uh, other niggas and shit. A battle rapper at that. Like a nigga who <laughs> don't even like got as much clout as Papoose. That's fucking, that's fucking wild, bro. That shit will break my heart. That shit make you, like, give up on love type shit, real talk. <laughs> like, it's like, damn, bro. Like, motherfuckers really be out here, like, sneaking around. And yo, your main shoddy, like, yo, yo number one, bro. Like, she really just, like, fucked you up. That shit crazy, bro. That's like fucking, like, just imagine, like, rest in peace, Nipsey. Just imagine if Nipsey was back alive and then there was some reports came in out, coming out that Lauren London, like, cheated on Nipsey Hustle. Like, that shit crazy, bro. That's like, yo. Crazy. Bro, that's your number one. That's your number one hitter, bro. It, it hit different, bro, cause like us, us niggas, like, bro, we we be cheating and shit. We be out here in the streets, like fucking around and shit. But like, you don't never, you don't never expect your girl to do some shit like niggas that. So, don't cheat, bro. Bro, so <laughs> hey, hey, hey that's how that's cheat. how it is out in Dallas yeah, too, bro. Don't cheat, hey, bro, that's how it is in Dallas cheat. too, bro. We 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 stay strong. Yeah, we don't cheat. But hey, look, but what I'm saying for the for the niggas who do cheat, you know what I'm saying? Outside of South Carolina. Line outside of Dallas, but the niggas who do cheat, bro. Yo, number one, yo, yo, number one, bro, cheating on you, bro. That shit, that shit crazy. That shit crazy, especially with somebody who been together as long as Remy Ma and Papoose. They they've been together for a minute too. So like shit for for, for years. Ever since I was young, a uh, young little jit, they've been together. So just to see her like cheat on him with a battle rapper too, that just it just wasn't a good look. Like it, it lucky made Papoose look a little weak type shit. So like it's just that's why that's why your that's why your queen can't be. That's why you gotta hold your house down. Don't let your queen get out there like that. Yeah, for sure. What you think is 
Well, who do you think is the craziest Zodiac sign? Ooh, the craziest Zer you know, Zodiac, Zodiac sign, bro. It has to be Virgos, dog. Like, it has to be Virgos. My brother, a Virgo. Uh, Caprice, a Virgo. My, my daughter, a Virgo. Like, shit, bro. Like, it, it gotta be Virgos, bro. Like, Virgos fucking go, like, my, my daughter, she wild. You feel me? Hey, yo, I just want to wrap this shit up by saying, man, shout out to my boy Street Credentials for fucking with me and having me on his platform. You feel me? That's my dog for life. We definitely going to go up after this shit. Uh, go follow me on Instagram, Gemini uh, underscore official with two eyes. Uh, if you follow me from this interview, I'm going to follow you back for sure, for sure, for shit show. Uh, 100. Um, and we got, we about to go on tour with Jacquees, Mr. Three Capital E's himself, E E E. We about to turn up with the gang, you feel me, out there in Dallas. Uh, so come rock with our shows. Uh, we got a, a new song coming out uh, about to be called Beatles. Uh, shout out Apollo Rari. He couldn't be here because he was turning up in Indiana. Uh, but, you know what I'm saying, we still we still rocking as a duo even when we separate, you feel me. Um, and just I just want to say shout out to guys, you know what I'm saying. Shout out to Dallas. Shout out to Tommy, my bodyguard. Shout out to uh, Queen uh, Royalty. She wasn't she couldn't make it, but she, she's still finna get plugged in. Just shout out to uh, everything that I love, you know what I'm saying? Like, we keep going up. Shout out to my daughter, first and foremost. Uh, she just turned two in September, and, you know, she she really my heart. So, you know what I'm saying? That's all I really got to say. Piping a Rari and pushing Tariqa the killer, I'm about to go go. Soon you niggas ain't talking about running that money, you niggas be doing the most. Huh. I spend the money on fashion, look at my